Last year I reviewed Mega Man 7 on the Super Nintendo, which I consider to be an underrated classic on the console, mostly due to its release date. But around that time I also looked back at the game that got me into the classic series, which was Mega Man 8, released on the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn. And when I talk to most people about the game, it seems to be the black sheep of that franchise. Really? This game? I thought it was pretty good. It had really great graphics, it had a great soundtrack, and really solid gameplay, but... I guess it's all opinion at the end of the day. Well, Mega Man 8 was released to be the 10th anniversary celebration for the franchise, so maybe fans were expecting it to heavily break ground, especially after 7 games where it has gone a little bit stagnant at points. So with that in mind, does Mega Man 8 deliver on being a 10th anniversary game? Well, let's take a closer look. We are super sonic racing, running to the point of no return. This time around, the story takes place in space of all places, where a blue and purple robot are going at each other until they crash into the Earth. Meanwhile, in whatever city this is, Mega Man and Bass fight over whose voice acting is less terrible. Mega Man, today we finish this. Hey, Bass! Why must they fight you? We are not enemies! Shut up! You know what? I think that was a response for mispronouncing his name. But no time for that as Dr. Light interrupts the fight, tell Mega Man that a meteor with a strong reading crashed on an island and sends Mega Man to check in on that. Unfortunately, Dr. Wally beats Mega Man to a capsule of evil energy. No, really, that's what it's called. Inside that crater, the blue robot from earlier is in there, and he gets sent to Dr. Light's lab for repairs. After defeating four of the robot masters, Mega Man brings back the evil energy containing them to Dr. Light, and that blue robot awakens and escapes from the lab, with Mega Man chasing him into the desert to have a battle, until Proto Man interrupts the fight, telling him that Dr. Wally's castle is right ahead before he just ups and leaves. Bye, Proto Man. Thanks for not actually doing anything after Mega Man 5. But I broke King's Shield! Don't make me think about that game! When Mega Man tries to approach the castle, a giant robot attacks Rock and Rush, but they're saved by the blue robot who introduces himself as Zero, I'm sorry, me, Duo, making his first canonical appearance. He further explains that the tower is protected by barriers that's being guarded by the four remaining robot masters. Well, it's a Mega Man game, you pretty much know where this is going. Inside the tower, Mega Man encounters base and treble because after all, he promised, I'll be back. And in typical Mega Man fashion, he faces off against Wily, who tries to blast a blue bomber, but Duo stops him, which also destroys Wily's cannon. But as a result, Duo becomes damaged, with Proto Man taking him back to the lab to be healed. Okay. Dr. Wily is defeated with the evil energy attacking Mega Man, which takes him outside, apparently. I mean, he was just indoors, and they just transit. Anyway, Duo returns to eliminate the evil energy infecting Rock, and wakes up in Dr. Light's lab, and finds Proto Man, who gives him a message from Duo. He said, thank you. Overall, I think it was a really nice plot, though there was a couple things I found a little bit questionable. What was the point of the cutscene before the final battle with Dr. Wily? And speaking of battles, where was base most of this game before the Wily Tower? This is something that always kind of bothered me ever since I first played this game. There was two robots at the beginning. We meet Duo, but where did the other one go? I mean, I guess the evil energy is supposed to be his essence, but Duo says something during the scene where he reawakens in Dr. Light's lab. He still lives. That line gave me the impression that that robot would come back as a final boss instead of Dr. Wily, or as a boss in general, but I digress. Control-wise, Mega Man feels comfortable. In fact, he feels a little bit more comfortable than the other games, honestly. He jumps, he shoots, if you beat a robot master, you can use your weapon, and for the first time, he can use his Mega Buster while you have a master weapon equipped, which is something I've only ever seen done in the Mega Man X games. Speaking of for the first time, Mega Man has the ability to swim. True, you only get about two stages where you get to do it, but hey, after seven games, it's nice it finally happened. Like Mega Man 7, you're limited to only four robot masters at the start, which I don't think is a bad thing, because this time you're actually encouraged to use the different weapons more than any other game before this. In fact, I think all of them have a use, most notably in Swordman stage, where it's almost required to use the first four weapons to get through the first half of the stage. And actually, I kind of like this design choice. I don't feel like I had to only use the Mega Buster to get by through most of the game, though I will say that Searchman stage goes a little bit overboard, where 
where it feels like you could just use the Thunderclaw and that's about it through the entire stage. Similar to another Mega Man game I want to talk about in the future, there are two sections for each level, and a couple times there are mini bosses to signify the end of the first half. This game is definitely less dingy with checkpoints this time around, and if you lose all your lives in the second half, you get to resume from there. And honestly, this is a design choice I also really like as well. It adds to the adventure, but it doesn't feel like it unnecessarily pads it out. I mean, they don't do it during the Wily stages, but still. It feels really good getting to that midway point, especially going through Frostman's stage where you get sick of hearing, jump, jump, slide, slide, jump, jump, jump. A checkpoint break is definitely needed. I'm told that Astro Man's stage can be annoying, especially with the puzzle solving stage set up in the second half, and I don't think it was that hard as I was able to get through it just fine. Now, when I'm trying to find the screws during this stage, well, that's a different story. Unlike the past games from Mega Man 2 on, this game lacks E, W, or S tanks, and it also lacks the rush adapter. In fact, you can't even use the rush jet on command, as there's two levels where you get to use it Gradius style, during which you could use Otto, who uses a bazooka cannon, Eddie, who drops bombs on the enemies, Speed, who does his thing, and Rush can also get the ability to shoot as well, but unfortunately there's only two sections in this game where you get to use it. However, we do have a couple new abilities for Rush, such as the Rush bike, which I ever only used to get a bolt or so. There's the Rush medic, which really came in handy for the last couple of fights in the game, because otherwise, I really never had to worry about the missing E-tanks. Because every time you die in this game, your weapon energy gets restored. And as of Mega Man 11, it's the only classic series game to do so. Restore us back, but this time you can only equip up to 8 power-ups. Just fine, because this time you can only get 40 screws in the game. The power-ups I recommend the most are the laser shot, which is a strong blast that can pierce even through shields. Though when I'm not using that, I'm using the arrow shot, which acts as multiple shots as one, and going through some of the stages become less of a struggle as a result. The other power-ups I recommend are the stabilizer, which prevents not back and trust me that's a godsend, the energy saver, which reduces the amount of energy the weapons use, the hyper slider, which lets you slide at any S speed, the hypercharger, which is pretty self-sad, and if you just want to, there's also the ability to climb ladders faster. Yeah, as far as the robot masters go, there are probably some of the easier ones, and I think being able to use your Mega Buster alone for special weapon helps out plenty. This time, thanks to voice acting, they all have dialogue before the battle, which can be cool to hear. It's awesome because I don't understand what he's saying. Those certain defeat quotes can be rather questionable. That felt good! That feels good. You just died! To outright creepy. See you in my dreams. Thanks to the voice acting, there's sound cues that you can hear when you're hit by a specific weapon. And with that said, I cannot stand Astro Man's English voice or Aquaman's Japanese voices as they are just ear grating. If you're playing the version on the Sega Saturn, you also get to fight against Cutman, who's an optional boss before Duo, and Woodman, who becomes the mid-stage boss for Search Man. They don't have their own weaknesses, but they're not too hard to battle. And come to think about it, the fortress bosses aren't too hard to beat either. Well, except for the first boss where you have to use the Mega Ball and position yourself at the right spot to hit it, or take out one of these containers that hold enemies that are annoying to dodge, or you can get extra energy. After you get his health down to half, there's a false version of this boss that can harm you with a shockwave if you hit it. You have this air boss, which is a cinch to beat, especially if you have Eddie or Otto helping you. Base's revenge isn't that hard when you use the flash bomb and Astro Crush. And there's a green devil boss who is less challenging than the past games or Mega Man X5 for that matter, thanks to the Thunderclaw and Flash Bomb. Of course, you fight against Dr. Wily again, and he uses that capsule thing again. And thankfully, it's nowhere as hard as it was in Mega Man 7. When it comes to the presentation, I am glad that they upgraded this from Mega Man 7, as everything feels properly spaced out. I can see enemies coming up. It just looks more natural to me. Similar to Mega Man X4, the cutscenes look fantastic. It makes me wish the studio who made this made an anime based off of Mega Man as well. And when it comes to the soundtrack, I can easily say out of the classic series, this is my personal favorite. I can't exactly pick one song from the soundtrack, but I will leave a playlist so you can hear it for yourself. Now, when it comes to the opening song, it could be a nameless and lyricless song, which is really pumping and gets you prepared for this game. Or it could be the Japanese version, Electrical Communication, which is just simply awesome. So overall, when it comes to Mega Man 8, I think this is still a really great game. I do understand the complaints that it gets, because it's definitely on the easier side compared to the last seven games, but I don't think that's a detrimental thing. 
When it comes to a franchise, I think it's good to have accessible entries within the series. I mean, yeah, we're missing the tanks and we're missing some upgrades, but personally with how this game is set up, it's not something I really miss. And that's what I love best about Mega Man 8. It feels like a balanced game overall. And just because it might be on the easier side, don't underestimate this game as there's gonna be moments you wanna pull your hair out. But going back to this game never gets old for me. In fact, I went through different ports and versions of this game just for the sake of this video. And speaking of ports, as I mentioned earlier, there is a Sega Saturn version of this game, which will most likely import because, uh, no thanks. Besides two extra bosses, there's a couple of different features added to this one. When you're in water stages, the texture of the water is smoother. Tinker Man's soundtrack is also different in this one. I have no clue why. Also, there's a lot of art to look at for those of you who love that kind of thing. It's the definitive port for sure, but unfortunately it's not easy to find as you can see with these prices. For this video, I use a Japanese copy, which is the most affordable way to own it, but it seems to be rising in price as of lately. The ports on both the Anniversary Collection and Legacy Collection 2 only features the PlayStation version of the game. And with that said, avoid the Anniversary Collection port as there's so many sound mixing issues, not to mention there seems to be some input lag especially during the boarding sections. And these problems aren't found in the Legacy Collection, so what gives? That's a good question. Well, this trip down memory lane has been certainly fun. So until the next time, this has been Remember This with Andy HG, and I'll see you next time. this trip down memory lane has been fun so in the meantime this has been remember this with and hg you know every time why is it trains 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 why is it trains <laughs>